Hey, what's going on? It's Matt from Town Square Media Bismarck, and uh, the first time I've ever done this, a Skype interview, and uh, Kat Perkins, finalist on The Voice, happy enough to uh, join us from uh, what looks like uh, her home, I believe. Well, it's the home that I nanny in that I wished it was mine, but uh, this is the, the famous home of the Keller the Kellers, who I nanny the five children here in Edina, Minnesota. Oh, and I see one walking behind you right now. <laughs> it's five minutes of fame. He's he's the one that uh, he's the one that helps me more than anything. That's uh, absolutely awesome. Well, uh, it was just announced last week that you're making a return to North Dakota on August 22nd, and if I read correctly, uh, the show tickets are sold out. Yes. So we put them up for sale yesterday for August 22nd at the Burning Hills Amphitheater, and it sold out, I believe, in like uh, four hours, which was unreal. So we're adding a second show. That's the breaking news today. We're going to do one on August 23rd, which would be that Saturday. So that hasn't been announced yet. Well, they just announced it online last night. I did see it on the Medora um, Facebook. Oh, well, this is the first that I'm hearing about it, so this is breaking news to me. This is breaking news to you, yes. That's uh, absolutely awesome. So two shows with Cat Perkins. If you didn't get your tickets for the uh, August 22nd show, August 23rd, she'll be there as well. How important was it for you to do your first show back in North Dakota, or one of your first shows back in North Dakota? I mean... When I pictured myself doing coming back to North Dakota to do my first concert, there was no other way that I pictured it besides Medora. It's my roots. It's my favorite stage. I mean, it's huge. It was a, it was a big task to to sit, you know undertake and think that I could actually sell tickets. But it's just such a beautiful, magical place, and I know that that's way overused. But I love that place. I fell in love with it when I was a kid, and I just I'm so excited to be able to do it there. And it's kind of where you got your start. You kind of got your beginnings on the Medora stage. And now to go back and to headline your own show, and now two shows, one of which is sold out in a day and a half, is awesome. It's crazy. I mean, I mean, I, I cannot wait to meet all the fans that supported me in North Dakota throughout the entire experience on The Voice and voted for me and saved me on Twitter and kept me on that show. And what better way to do that than the Badlands in the beautiful setting and just, you know, do a concert for all those fans. I'm so excited and flattered. And speaking of that uh, that support, how much did your hometown support, your home state support mean to you while you were off uh, in L.A. filming the show? I, I'm not kidding when I say I could literally feel the energy all the way on the West Coast. I could feel the entire state of North Dakota just lifting me up and, and making this such a, a, a more exciting and easier process for me. And it, it meant the world to me. I, I couldn't believe how people rallied. I felt like this, this mini like sports team from the Midwest because people got behind it like that. Now let's talk a little bit about your time on The Voice. Is it true that uh, your idea to try out for The Voice actually came from a producer who saw a video of you singing in Amsterdam? Yes, this is true. So over the past couple of years, I um, I performed for the troops overseas, and we did a couple of Middle Eastern tours. And when we would lay over in Amsterdam, we noticed that there was a piano in that airport. So when we were coming through on the last one, they were egging me on to sing a song. Sing a song. It's like 6.30 in the morning. I said, no, no, no. I don't want to sing. I don't like to do that. Um but I took a, I took the boys up on their dare. We did a song, and that's what the producers saw up on YouTube, and it changed my life forever. Now, when you're sitting there singing this song, did you ever think in a million years that this this video in Amsterdam would lead to you being this uh, this person who was getting national recognition in, in front of millions of people every week? I didn't even think that it would go up on YouTube. I, <laughs> I had I don't I had no idea that anything was going to happen. It was weird when I looked up. And I, I was closing my eyes when I was singing, and I, when I looked up, there was a ton of people recording it on their iPads and iPhones and, and all sorts of devices. And I was like, oh, this might up, end up on the Internet. That was my only thought. And, yeah, no, it's cra It's a crazy story. It's crazy to be standing here to think that that's how it all happened. And it was a year ago today that I did my first audition in California. So it's kind of an anniversary that's exciting. It is. It's definitely that. And it's been a long process. I can't believe it's been a year. And while you were on The Voice, you performed a, a lot of classic rock songs. What made you decide to go back into the uh, into the vaults, so to speak, and pick something from uh, the 70s, the 80s, as opposed to picking maybe something more contemporary? You know, I didn't have 
really any say in that, and especially in the beginning. That was just, that was all Adam and the producers, and they choose songs for you up until the end. Um, I did get a little bit more brave towards the end and stepped in when I did get lucky and said I wanted to step out of that classic rock vault and do something modern and put my spin on something, and they let me do that. But otherwise, it was chosen by them, and that was just, they, they casted me, so to say, so to speak, as a rock singer, classic rock singer, and that's what they wanted me to stay true to. So, and I and I liked it. I'm a huge fan of classic rock. Huge. I mean, that's what I do. That's who I am. But so when you decided to do Get Lucky, there were a lot of people that thought that maybe that wasn't the right way to go. What made you decide to try and uh, go out on a limb and do that? And my sister was a huge influence in that one because we had had this idea for the song, and she's a huge fan of the voice as am i and we all know that each person usually has some sort of breakout performance especially when they put their own spin on something and use their artistry to show america that they're not only a good singer but they can actually rearrange some stuff and, and make it their own and, and be an artist and so my sister was really pushing me to do that and i love get lucky i love that song i wasn't quite sure that we could change it and still have people like it because it was so successful. But we went on a limb. And I was in the bottom three the week before. And so I really went in that week with the attitude of, like, I can't lose anything. You know I mean? I just got to do what I want to do. And I would have kicked myself if I would have gone off that show and said, you know what? I should have tried my artistry on something. I should have spun something. I should have done something modern. I, I have no regrets now. I I a risk. And uh, speaking of the voice, what was it like? Obviously, people see how things happen on camera. What was it like behind the scenes with Adam and uh, and just what was the behind the scenes vibe of the voice in general? It was great. Uh, honestly, these are the most professional and um, uplifting people that I've really ever been surrounded by. And I really was skeptical about that being a competition show, a uh, seeing competition show. You know, I was a little bit worried about negativity or mockery, but I, again, I had watched the show since season one, so I kind of knew what they, what they were about. Um, so backstage, it was, it was lighthearted, uh, especially Adam. He's a goofball. He goofed around at all times. He goofed around so much, sometimes we wouldn't get anything done because he would be goofing around and playing the drums or playing the guitar or showing me a song that he had written last night or he's he's a really down-to-earth dude, and he's a really, really talented musician. Um, other than that, you know, the producers, everybody, they're very nice, and they lifted us up through the entire process. So it made it a lot easier to stay positive, work that hard, work that many hours, and do what we needed to do. So you're technically the second North Dakotan to go on a, a major run of The Voice. Gwen Sebastian, of course, went uh, went pretty far as well. She was just here in Bismarck over the weekend. Do you think that North Dakota and this area has a surplus of talent that's just waiting to be found? Here's what I think about, you know, the ruralness of North Dakota, where I grew up. I think that we learn, first of all, how to work really hard. I think North Dakotans are really hard workers because of the nature of what we've done and our, our relatives and our ancestors being farmers and, you know, growing up in that rural sector where you did chores in the morning, then you went to school and then you worked after school and you slept and repeated. So when it came to like my generation, I think we still used all of those skills that we saw our grandparents and our parents do. And we found something that we loved in, in mine case, and Gwen's case. We loved music, and I think we focused so hard on it in our younger years and in high school that we really honed in our craft, and I think that that's happening all the time in North Dakota, and now we have YouTube and we have all these other devices for people to, to showcase that talent where I didn't. I didn't have any of that, um, and I decided to move to the cities to, to try to work in the, in the industry and, and showcase my talent elsewhere, but uh, I'm always proud with when music comes out of North Dakota because... I think we're very talented and hardworking. What kind of advice would you give to singers and performers maybe in North Dakota or maybe in rural areas that are trying to get out there that want to be noticed? What what would you tell them right now as someone who's who's made it onto the big stage? I did a couple of school seminars this uh, when I got home from The Voice, and my advice to, to the little ones was just to really keep dreaming and, and dream it, do it. And that was my motto through the entire process of The Voice. 
if you think you can do it or if you want to do it, then do it or try it and see if it works for you and see if it's something that resonates with you and that you can love. Because I believe that if you love to do something, that that means you should do it. And every try to find every single outlet that you can do that, whether that be making videos, putting yourself on the internet, putting yourself out there, going to auditions, uh, going to sing at the local variety show, you know, trying everything to see how it resonates within you and the response and honing in your craft. And I say, you know, if it makes you happy, then do it. Now, obviously, people are going to have the chance to see you, love what you do, coming up, uh, Medora. Now, two shows, August 22nd and August 23rd. The 22nd yes. officially sold out, so we've announced a uh, second show here. What can we expect from these shows in August? Well, that was a good That's a great question. That was a question that we were faced with out here when we decided we wanted to, you know, go back and head strong and, and develop concerts and, and, put, and meet the fans that that really put me on that stage and helped me go far. So, um, you know, in visiting with a lot of the fans out here in Minnesota, they really wanted to hear a lot of the tunes that I did on the show, which I don't blame them. I loved most every song that I did on there. So we're definitely going to revisit some of those. And then I've been writing and recording some of my own new stuff, originals, and we're working, you know, on eventually having an album. But by the time we come to Medora, we'll have that first single um, to release and we'll have it in, in our hands so we can actually sell it and hopefully two other songs to accompany that as far as my new sound and the first solo record of Cat Perkins, which I've never done. I've recorded many albums, but never solo. Um, so we're really excited to debut that and you guys are going to love the songs and we're staying in that rock vein, but we're you know making it a little bit more modern and, and putting my own little twist on it. So it's going to be good. The songs have turned out amazing. And, uh, and of course, I love singing cover tunes as well. So we're going to do some fan favorites and, and some of my own. So you, you've kind of answered this already, but uh, what does the future hold for Cat Burgers? Because now you've had, like I said, you've had your, your time on the big stage, and obviously you want to keep the momentum going. Yeah, I mean, really, honestly, I've just been, I put together a great team out here to just try to use this experience from The Voice as a springboard into being in the industry full time and touring and writing and recording. And that's what I want. I've wanted to do my whole life. And I've done a little bit of it, you know, in years past. Um, but now it's just a little bit different platform. So I really needed to have people to help me to deal with this, you know, newfound platform and, um, and, you know, get the bigger shows going. So it's, it's really as simple as that. It's, it's writing, recording, touring, meeting the fans and the reason I have always done this is to entertain people to give back to fans and to let people escape for a couple hours and coming to see my show and just escaping the work land and you know being entertained for that amount of time so really it's that simple and and I'm going to continue to do that as long as people keep listening to me well, two shows coming up this summer, August 22nd, August 23rd in Medora. Of course, the 22nd is sold out. 23rd just announced late last night, and the tickets for that, I'm assuming, will be on sale soon? Yes, I, I, I need to check on that. They might have went on sale today, but I, I will check very soon, if not. And Tiger Lily will be performing uh, in both of those shows as well. So it'll be cool to showcase some other North Dakota talent. Well, Cap Perkins, I will, uh, I will let you go here. Is there anything else you want to say to your fans here in North Dakota? Uh, thanks. There's no words to say thank you for my new life. And I cannot wait to, again, meet each and every one of you and to try to give back to you what you've given me this new life. So thank you. And if you want a more personal insight into my journey, then follow me on social media, Cat Perkins Music on Twitter, Cat Perkins Music on Facebook, and of course my website. And we're going to, you know, try to do as many shows in North Dakota as we possibly can in the nearest future. So I cannot wait to see everyone at the shows. Cat Perkins, finalist on The Voice, August 22nd, August 23rd in Medora. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks for doing this.